Hello, welcome to another INFJ Ramble. Today's topic is going to touch on creating your experiences. What do I mean by that? So several things tied into creating your experience. Um, I guess some people refer to it as the law of attraction, but let's break it down even more so that you can understand. So what do you want to experience? And I'm not talking about what you want to experience in the future. What do you want to experience now? Do you want to experience peace or joy or chaos or friction or depression or happiness or sadness? Or what do you want to experience? Because you get to decide in every moment. And um, first thing you got to really realize is you need to set the tone. Don't let anyone else do it for you. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I don't know if you know what I mean. Um, the second thing is what, what station are you tuned into? Um, let me give you an example. So I've used this example before, but just think of a radio and how the radio has many stations or even a TV. So many stations that you could tune into right with your remote control or by tempering the dial or whatever so do you want to listen to heavy metal music do you want to listen to classical music what do you want to what do you want to listen to because you determine what kind of experience you're going to have in every moment based on the tone and what you're tuning into so let me break it down with some examples, some personal examples that I, I've had. <clears throat> so for instance, I work with a coworker and this coworker's mind is very fragmented. Um, this person has a lot of anxiety, a lot of like, you know, an inability to focus, right? And when I first encountered this person, because I allowed her to set the tone, guess what I experienced? I experienced her anxiety and fragmentation and inability to really concentrate and it took a toll on me. It's because I chose, I chose to let her set the tone. What we don't realize is everything is based on micro moments, whether you are aware of it or not, in every single micro moment you choose. So after um, encountering this coworker, you know, over and over, I just kind of started analyzing, observing, um, you know, breaking it all down. And I, I came to the conclusion that I was allowing her to set the tone. And once I discovered that, what was going on, I took a different stance and I started taking the necessary action to set my own tone and to not allow anyone else to do it for me. And um, so now when I encounter this person, I'm aware of her disposition, I am aware of how she is wired, I am aware of a lot of things, and I allow her to be. I don't try to change her, I don't try to, you know, you know, I don't try to change her, I don't, I don't try to fight her, I just allow her to be, and then I set my own tone, which is calmness and peace and a very focused mind. So now when I, I work alongside her, you know, I am very calm and composed and I do not allow her to take me for, take me on a ride through her mind. <laughs> do you understand? I mean, we let this 
we let this happen all the time and then we wonder why we are stressed or we are feeling heavy or drained. It's because you're allowing someone else to set the tone. And it's funny, you set the tone when you wake up in the morning, you set the tone in every single moment you encounter something or someone. You know, it's just being aware of your triggers, um, your mind and what it expects and just kind of not allowing these things to set the tone for you, letting your soul set the tone. You know what I mean? Um, also, what are you tuning into? And this goes back to a lot of my other videos and that's why I'm very particular about a lot of the things that I digest. You know, like, I, I think I've experienced enough to know what is good for me, what will nourish me, what will um, help me to enhance myself. I've experienced enough to know what components are necessary and what components are not necessary. And again, it's highly impersonal. You know, it's it only becomes personal if you take it personally. So, you know, for instance, if I encounter a rude person, I can allow them, I can choose to, and allow them to let them trigger me and, and I can allow them to set the tone or I can just kind of like step back, see this person as they are, allow them to be and stay in my peace and calmness and proceed from that place. And I, I think you can agree that when you approach life through a calm and stable mind, things, things are much clearer. You know what I mean? You can see things much clearer and it's not as hazy or confusing. You know what I mean? So yeah, set the tone. And then what are you tuning into? Like for me, that's why I am so particular and I'm not um, judging anyone. I mean, everyone has free will. You can do whatever you want based on what you want to experience, what, you, what kind of outcome you want. You know, I'm looking to elevate, elevate myself to higher levels and degrees of consciousness. And because I've chosen that in order to get the outcome, I need to discard things that are not going to support me and my lifestyle while, you know, proceeding on that path, you know, and yeah, it's as simple as that. My, my other half, he still watches like a lot of like stuff or he allows himself to be exposed to, I want to say toxic stuff in the form of media. Like he's on YouTube watching people fighting and he thinks that's entertaining. And he's on YouTube watching people like, I don't know, fail videos where they like try to attempt to do something and they fail horribly at it. And, you know, and then he encounters all this stuff in life and he complains about it. But I'm like, well, what are you tuning into? And like, I don't, I don't witness these things, you know, like a lot of the things I encounter, no lie, peaceful. I mean, once in a while I'll have like, you know, a person who is, um, you know, baby soul. <laughs> That's the nicest way to put it, guys without like judging or sounding condescending and it's it's a reference point for the mind I mean nobody wants to label or judge or categorize but the mind needs to be appeased and in order to appease my mind that's how I I break it down into soul groups soul ages you know so I've encountered someone who is rude and you know um, difficult to deal with who's throwing a fit, you know, and cannot be appeased, what helps me to put my mind at ease and 
helps me to retain my peace is to just kind of look at them like a baby soul. I mean, what do babies do? Babies cry. They need attention. They need love. They need understanding, care, tolerance. I mean, if you were to be triggered by a baby soul, you know, number one, that just is a gauge that you still need to work on yourself. And number two, you know, you're allowing someone to set your tone and also you're allowing them to take your power. You know what I mean? Because I think a lot of masters have acquired a power to the extent where they do not let anything outside of themselves affect them too much. I mean, they're aware that they're, that there's, there's issues, you know, but they don't necessarily react. They respond very calmly, very quietly, very under, from a place of understanding, you know. And I, I think, you know, like an older soul or a more mature soul will not cause so much friction or chaos or confusion. You know, they're pretty like steady minded, you know. So anytime you encounter someone who's being really abrasive, I mean, it's probably a baby soul and they're, they're teaching you self mastery. They're showing you where you're at, you know, because if you're being triggered or you're allowing them to set the tone, then, you know, you still have to focus on certain aspects of yourself in order to attain some kind of mastery. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of times these baby souls just need to be consoled. That's it. And I do that. You know, I think it's really interesting how it's so hard for people to apologize. You know, like for me, I apologize not because I feel I've done it, done something wrong per se. I mean, if I've done something wrong, I'll, I'll take accountability for it and I will apologize but in some some other cases or most other cases because I'm dealing with more like baby souls or younger souls and they get triggered so easily I'll apologize to them just to neutralize the situation and I think a, a strong person can do that a weaker person not so much because they they, their pride, their pride gets in the way. You know what I mean? Like for me, um, I'll, I practice humility, you know? And if I need to apologize to you for something that I didn't do to neutralize the situation, I will do it. And most of the time it does neutralize the situation, you know, because a lot of the babies just want to be like heard and understood. You know what I mean? So for instance, oh my gosh, let me tell you these stories. So when I used to work at um, a hardware store, I came, I, I came across a couple of customers. Let me, let me tell you this story. So I came across a couple of customers. The first one, she was being very rude. And I remember like, like looking at her and with a very neutral stance, you know, and I, I allowed her to bitch me out. <laughs> and when she was done talking, I looked at her and I, and I apologized. I said, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm trying my best to help you right now, but you know, I can only do so much and I'm, I'm so sorry, you know? And then she, she just for, from me doing that, she realized that, you know, she was kind of acting out of character and she, she looked at me and she apologized to me and she said, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm having a bad day, you know, um, thank you for trying. And then I looked at her and said, yeah, you know, no problem, you know. I really am trying and I really want to help you. It's just my hands are tied right now and I, I cannot deliver what you need right now. And then I looked at her and I said, do you need a hug? And it's surprising. She let her guard down. She decompressed. She released a lot of like, you know, the anger that she was projecting and she opened her arms. I hugged her and she started crying. 
So that's what I'm saying. People just want to be heard and understood and empathized with, you know, and usually that's all it takes. Another customer um, was being very rude to me. And again, and it's so funny, at this hardware store, sometimes the store managers would be dealing with difficult customers and they would walk away and then call me to go and deal with the customer because I think they knew I could, I could neutralize the situation just by being calm and understanding and listening. And isn't that what we're good for, guys? We're great listeners, right? But anyways, um, yeah, the second customer, was, I was sent to defuse her. <laughs> and um, she was very, very rude to me. And I just looked at her and I said, you know, basically the same thing, like, you know, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm trying the best that I can do for you, and, you know, I totally understand where you're coming from, I would be upset too, and, you know, I just kind of, like, you know, did that, and I was being sincere, because I was putting myself in her shoes, and I totally understood, like, I would be upset too, you know, and then she's, she kind of stopped, and she goes, you know what, Thank you for being so kind to me right now. And then I'm like, of course, you know? And then she was like, I've just been having the most horrible day. Like, everything's been going wrong. And, you know, she kind of, like, went into, like, details of, like, all these things she encountered throughout the day that just kind of went awry. And then, you know, I could feel her pain. And so I just said, do you need a hug? You know, I think, I think human touch is so healing, like just a hug, like for me, like at the end of the day, if I'm stressed out, all I need is a hug to just kind of help, you know, just make everything go away. You know what I mean? That release, like that human touch, it's so healing, even just like touching someone's shoulder or, you know, like a hug, yeah, like a hug, you know, but anyways, I asked her if she needed a hug and she threw her arms open and I hugged her and she's she started crying as well it's weird I don't know I, I think I help people to release a lot of pent-up stress I don't know maybe maybe that's what I do I've even given interviews where people would start crying I know that sounds really odd right I have at least three people I've interviewed that started crying and then they would be apologizing to me, like wiping their tears and going, I don't know why I, I just feel so emotional right now. And I just feel, I just feel like crying. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's come over me. And I'm just like, it's okay. You know? Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why I have that effect. Maybe I am here to help people decompress stress. Anyways, thanks for listening for, to this long, strong video. I hope you have a beautiful night and blessings to one and all. Amen.